Welcome back, 0K fans. This is Shadow 3 with another 0K match. It's going to be one between Randy and Clone on Tartarus. Yeah, this one. This stream has had a lot of really good players. They had Randy and Golda. Apparently, they've both come back and started playing more games. These are very recent games. So Randy. Actually, you probably should go to Tartarus itself. Randy is a, gay, is a player who was actually. He played StarCraft a lot. And apparently, had played Total Annihilation before and possibly. Other spring games as well. Yeah, they play a very raider heavy playstyle, extremely raider heavy. They just like to build glaives the entire game through. If I see them build anything other than glaives, that's that means something. Let's put it that way. And anyway, we're gonna be on Tartarus, which is a map with, well, for the most part, fairly standardized plus two ish. I mean, the corners are more valuable, the center is less valuable, but it's overall roughly about plus two. The corners are also not both passable. This wall here, you need to either terraform it or use spiders. Or air units, obviously. That's the only way to get up to these metal extractors. This plus five metal right here. The other plus five metal you can get to with regular bots, but it's less defensible as a result. And then, of course, there's that one metal spot that's kind of out of the way. The center tends to be fairly contested, but whoever can take it works out fairly well. Usually, these metal extractors go to the south player, and these ones go to the north player, with these two being contested. And then usually this section is the north players, and this one's the south players. And then, for the most part, this map tends to focus around spiders, spiders, gunships, cloaky. However, this time we do see jump bot and shield, which is different. I don't usually see those. Though jump bot can actually get up here as well. I should have pointed that out. Jump bot and spider. The all-terrain factories. So let's start the game, see how that plays out. So Randy is, like I said, starting with jump bot, starting with a few puppies while clone going for the shield bot factory and going for dirt bags. Very typical start, dirt bags being the typical scout unit. They're cheap, they're actually fairly tough, and they can deal some damage if they have to, but normally they're just used to scout out and occasionally try to block off areas because when they die, they do leave a mound. But the fact that they deal damage directly means that they're leaving a mound part of their game, that's actually become far less important. Like ever since they switched over to having a bit of damage, having that headbutt, the fact that they end up blocking areas, and that and the fact that they their blocking is not vehicle, sorry, is bot impathable. Used to be only blocked vehicles, now it blocks vehicles and bots. So it makes it far less useful to simply spam them out since they block everything. Rather than just being a way for shield bot factory to just completely make light vehicles factory day terrible, or light vehicle factories day terrible. Which is what they used to do. Because seriously, shield bot factory, they had a massive advantage on light vehicles, partly because of the dirt bags, and partly because Levelers are pretty much the only thing that can get through the shields, and still, levelers are still one of the easier ways of getting through shields, but it's far better with dirtbags being bot impathable as well. It means that it means that the shield bot factory doesn't get a major advantage if they just use dirtbags to smack up the entire area full of hills, because they have to deal with it too. Or if their dirtbags get killed outside the factory, their factory gets blocked. Oh yeah, Dominatrix ignores shields. Okay, good point. Yes. Domi ignores shields and leveler splash damage kind of gets through shields. Randy, however, taking the southeast. A little bit unusual, as I mentioned before. Usually the northwest is the north player's choice, but no, the southeast this time. Given that clones going for shield bot, I can kind of see why Randy's doing that, though. They're probably going to try to expand to both corners, given that they're essentially both free, short of terraforming, and clone can terraform a ramp to get to the top. A little surprising that this freaker has not decided to jump over yet. It could very easily do exactly that, but it's not. Randy apparently not paying attention. What is Randy focusing on right now? Okay, now they're focusing on it, right as I say that, of course, as usual. I say something and then, oh hey, it happens. In a replay. This is a replay, by the way. It's not like the players are playing this game live and stream sniping and going, oh yeah, Shadow Fury mentioned I should do that. I will do that. No, this is a replay. This is from a few hours. Actually, when is this from? This is from almost a week ago. <laughs> so yes, I can just speak back in time. It's, it's from my experience as an Akron commentator. I can speak through time. Just throwing that out there. So yeah. I have cheated. I have spec cheated every single one of your games. Every single game you play, I'm spec cheating. Even if I'm nowhere to be found, even if it hasn't come up in years, I was still spec cheating it. I'm sorry. But I was. I just, I really, just full disclosure. Okay. Get that off the table. Get that on the table. Just get that understood. Anyway, back to the game at hand. Randy is going to be building up, well, going for pyros. Typical switch, puppy to pyro. They do have no moderators yet, which is a little bit surprising. While Clone was going for a roach, nope, still going for the roach. 
Eskazi has reported me. Eskazi has reported me through time. I'll need to be banned. Anyway, this roach should be probably set over... Why is it here? I can kind of see why it's here. Because I think what Knoen is thinking is that Randy's going to try to come over this hill. Which is actually bot passable. And the roach will be there just to meet them. But given where Randy actually is, Clone does have radar. They do know where Randy is. They don't know as much about behind the hill, but everything else they know. A bit surprised that that roach was not laid out here so that the puppies, and or rather the pyros, would end up walking over it. And it looks like it, it's going to remain here. It looks like that's where Clone's decided to put that particular roach. Well, Randy going heavily for pyros. Like I said, this is a thing that Randy does. I did mention they were an old school TA player, and that's also why you get the 100 thing rather than repeat. Making 100 of a unit type instead of repeating. Because TA didn't have repeat build. It did have the ability to use a couple hotkeys to make 50, I think 5, 10, 20, 100 or something like that in a row, like at a time just by clicking. That's the thing that Randy's taking advantage of. And that's also kind of why they ended up having. Massive one unit spam. They can do multiple units, it's just that it's easier to do multiple units when you have a repeat build. Harder to do when you're just going off of make a hundred of a type. And Clone going around raiding what they can, getting some good shots in with the bandits. They are going to lose one of these bandits to the pyro though. Or no, never mind. I completely misjudged the distance there. It was way out of range. However, Randy is going to be attacking directly. This roach here still hanging out at an odd point, but I think Randy might actually run into it. It's not the safest position to put a roach. It's not the most flexible position to put that roach. It does kind of require that it comes over the hill, that Randy's units go over this hill. And Clone switching over to Thuglaw, point out as well. The, the band is being used kind of to cover Thuglaw. And one of the pyros going over where the roach is might go up on them. Not really sure. Same time, we do have moderators. Sorry, that's Freaker. That's not a moderator. No moderators haven't built. I don't know why I keep expecting them to be Okay, I know why I keep expecting them to be built. Because typically, when people play jump bots, they build moderators. Around this stage in the game, when they're dealing with heavier units, they switch over to moderators. That's not happening, though. Randy's not going to do that. They're going to go heavily for pyros. They're going to be building pyros for probably the rest of the game. We'll see, but I kind of doubt they're going to change up too much. Anyway, Clone's continuing along with the Thug Law Bandit Ball. Well, Randy hasn't taken the Northwest yet. They do have a Freaker over there. They are starting to take it. Not completely, though. In the Southeast, someone divided between Clone and Randy. Well, Clone's Commander starting it under some fire, but even then, not the biggest deal. Pyros, they get torn apart by Lotuses, and there's essentially two here with the Commander. And the Thuglaw Ball, still doing a decent job. By the way, Flames do not penetrate shields. I'm not sure if Randy realizes this, but this, I think, has been changed... I think it was changed after Randy took a hiatus. Like, Randy hasn't played in a while, so I think they might still expect that Pyro shields, or Pyros will penetrate shields, which they don't. Shields are now going to be able to block... The shields have been able to block fire and gauss for a few months now. And the roach being moved forward. Not the best position. The, that lotus gets rid of the roach. All the roach does is levels a hill. That's about it. The sad, tragic end of that roach. Oh, never mind. We are going to see a jack. We're going to see a different unit. Something else. Randy going for a jack. Okay, so we have four pyros and a jack. Actually a bit of a scary force, especially for shield bots. Especially given that jacks are melee. So the shields mean nothing to them. They come up close enough that the shields are already passed through. The pyros may not counter, but the jack is certainly going to have a much easier time. And the pyros coming in here. Only two thugs and one outlaw will not be enough to deal with this. And these, these units have to retreat. The thugs should be able to get rid of maybe one pyro at best, but it doesn't really matter. Both players disengage. Don't want to lose any units. They don't have to. Wisest thing to do, really, in that situation. And Clone just continuing to get these metal extractors up, just slowly but surely expanding. However, slowly is the operative word, I'm afraid. They do still have less map control. They only have about, looks like about seven metal extractors. And Randy still has the southeast. Neither player has switched over, and there's no terraforming to try to take care of that. There's no air switch from Clone to try to take care of that. Nothing has been done to try to make that any different than it is now. There are some raids going in the center of the map, however, and the Jack can't do much about them. Getting rid of these metal extractors. The pyros will, however, help. The bandits are way out of position. They, this is a suicide mission for them. But they can get rid of the right stuff. They can get rid of... If they can at least help things out. Soft things up so that round two, which may never come, actually. Although, the thug laws are kind of trying to be round two. They can come in and deal follow-up blows. That should work pretty well. A little tough for the thugs to actually attack, though. 
One problem with the thug law ball is that the thugs tend to get in each other's way when it comes to actually targeting, because obviously units cannot shoot through each other. I mean, obviously, but it's an important thing to point out. Units cannot shoot through each other. Always an important thing to keep in mind. Because of that, the thugs have to be close enough that they are able to cover the outlaws with their shields, but far enough away that they can actually shoot, which is a very tricky position to be in. So it looks like Clone has managed to do it. Managed to get quite a few shots and killed off three pyros with no losses of their own. The Jack being the only real threat, and that's been slowed down to the point that it should be avoidable pretty easily, actually. The only downside being that the Jacks come into the base, but still more thugs. Some comics to repair if necessary, and bandits as well for extra fire support. That being said, Randy does have an opening. These stag defenses are a problem, but Randy does have... They have all of Clone's units in the defensive. Randy can expand, Randy can push a bit more. They had the units to do it, that's the only thing. They don't really have the units for it. They are going for a Firewalker. A bit of an odd choice. But that Firewalker will be actually pretty handy. I mean, they'll have to whittle down the shields a bit first in order for the Firewalker to be truly useful. But still, it could at least damage the shields a fair bit. Anyway, Randy is building up more defenses. Not sure if I agree with that. Very much consolidating the territory on the western side. But the eastern front... It's pretty open. The only thing is the southeast corner. If Clone can get rid of that southeast corner, take it from Randy, Clone's going to be in a much better position. They'll have pretty much economic parity. They can take that, take everything here, and the Firewalker being put to good use against the bandits. But yeah, if Clone can tear this apart, they can tear this down, they can take all these metal extractors, and that'll be... That will even things out. Clone won't be on the back foot. Their best hope at this point is just that Randy will continue to go for these expensive units. Although now that the moderators are being built up, that's actually going to be... Even then, it's going to be not good enough. So going once again to try to crack open the western side. Or at least get rid of the commander, if nothing else. Which should be actually fairly successful. Mostly light defenses at this point, and the outlaws will take care of that with no issue. However, there's only a few seconds for that to actually work out. Randy's commander is only going to be vulnerable until these pyros come in, and it looks like... The power is going to retreat. Randy's commander being left to die and does die spectacularly. The felon finally completing that thug law ball coming in for clone as they pretty much break this shell on the west side of the map. Now the east side of the map still has the moderators. There are still two moderators, a third in production. There are still about half a dozen pyros and the jack still a big threat just due to the fact that there's so much health the felon's going to lose all of its shields getting rid of it. That's always the thing you want to do against felons. Throw heavy units at them, but even then, there's so many shields that the felon, sh the felon shields already back to 50% after only three seconds. Like, the shield recharge rate is very high for this felon. Just, there are enough units in that ball that even with heavy units taking it down, it's still not going to be that easy. So clone, they're pulling back, but they need to get rid of the southeast. I don't even... Are they aware of that? No, they aren't. They're partially aware of it. They're aware of these defenders, but they aren't aware of any of the expansions. They aren't really aware that there is a metal extractor here. They need to deal with that. They're getting an air switch, which hopefully will allow them to tear that apart and then retake it for themselves. They build up a crane afterwards and just tear that area apart. Same thing with the Northwest. The Northwest is far less well defended. There's no Freaker up there as well. So if anything comes up to deal with it, that'll go down sooner. In fact, that's probably the better option. Oh, I see. Clone didn't, apparently didn't even realize that they couldn't go on the corners with regular bots. They just tried to get the bandits up to the northwest corner and couldn't. That explains a fair amount. Actually, that explains quite a lot. Okay, now it looks like the Firewalkers just do nothing. Not unexpected. Firewalkers won't be able to get through the shields. I was thinking they might be able to burn the tops of the shields, but they're probably going to be best against the bandits. Just help get rid of those. Definitely a good choice when you have the moderators that need the support. But even then, that would actually damage the moderators just as much, if not more. Yeah, it looks like the shields pretty much provide immunity. Not surprising, you see the fire actually ends up slightly above ground because of the shields. Smacks into the shields and doesn't quite work out as well as you'd like it to. And once again, more attacks come in here. Oh, never mind, actually. The fire goes... Penetrates shields? Okay, I was exactly wrong. I wasn't entirely sure how Firewalker interacted with that. They are rarely built. Gotta be quite honest, Firewalker doesn't come up much, and Randy going for an air switch of their own. Both players, they air switched about the same time. Or they added air, rather, at about the same time. But that Firewalker now gone, so it doesn't really matter how Firewalkers interact, because that one is dead, and Randy's not building another one right now. They seem to be happy with the Moderators and Pyros. Which does mean that Clone can just rush in with their shield ball. Well, for 
a given definition of rush that applies to the shield ball accurately. Well, Thon should be able to tear this apart. Yeah, this this area here is gone. This area to the southeast needs to be destroyed. I don't know why Clone hasn't taken a few Phoenix or gotten a Phoenix or two and just torn it apart. Like I said, not sure if Clone's thinking about that or aware of that. Like they really need to get rid of that. That is the thing that's keeping Randy ahead. Even though Clone has the military advantage right now, Randy has an economic advantage because of this, and it, it can easily grow, especially with the power, like, the, all the overdrive that can come from this. I mean, at this point, these metal extractors are running at double their rate. Like that's plus ten metal right here. That is huge, and apparently a scuttle went off, got rid of this entire shield ball. Sorry, I missed that. That came up right as I was explaining everything else going on, but yeah, that was a huge, huge problem. Getting rid of the felon, and now this entire shield ball gone down. Clone's fortunes turned around in an instant, thanks to that scuttle. They do, of course, have roaches. They could build those and use it to try to swing things back around, but the best thing they can do is build a phoenix or two and tear apart this entire area over here. Maybe a couple ravens, too, to get rid of the defenders. Well, they already have a couple ravens. But yeah, get rid of this area here. They are going to the northwest. That is good. Hopefully they'll realize that they should probably go for the southeast as well to help get rid of that. But these swifts, they're not going to last too long. Randy has their own swifts. Randy's going to be coming in here to try to counter-harass. Or not counter-harass, but to defend. They might counter-harass as well, but they probably just defend. Actually, they are counter-harassing. There are a few powers going around trying to get rid of a few metal extractors that Clone had overextended on. And these swifts getting into a bit of a fight... But at this point, Knoen does have air control. Pretty solidly. Lost a few Swifts in the process. But no question about it, Knoen has the air. That being said, though, Knoen's still able to get rid of the Northwest, but hasn't gone for the Southeast yet. Not sure if they haven't thought about it. It's just, there's no indication i found so far that Knoen is bothering to deal with the Southwest. The Northeast, yes. The Northeast they have taken care of. They've reduced Randy's metal, metal output by a fair amount. Still not quite at parity outside of Reclaim, but they have reduced it. They can get rid of this. This is the big thing, though. They get rid of that. That's another plus 10 metal that's out the door. And Randy will end up being an economic disadvantage. They are at a military disadvantage, despite the fact that Clone lost a lot of stuff there into that scuttle. There is still a military advantage for Clone. It's a small one. It's at least by cost, maybe, if not by type. But it exists. And a couple moderators go down. That is a nice shot there. Lost a Raven in the process, but still totally worth it. Moderators cost as much as Ravens. They're apparently considerably weaker than Ravens. Well, they're frailer than Ravens, but they that was deserved. That that was a good kill. That was worth losing a Raven for. And at this point, Randy gonna lose several more Ravens to Clone Swiss. And Clone is like if it weren't for the economic disadvantage, I would say that Clone is winning at this point, but And actually the disadvantage isn't that great. It's just, if they can get rid of the southeast. I know I'm harping on that, but that's a big deal. That's a lot of free resources Randy's been getting this entire game. And Clone has not even bothered to try to claim it. Like, Clone hasn't bothered to try to claim either corner, and Randy is now re... They're retaking the Northwest. Like, Clone got rid of that, but it's being retaken. It's... That's the thing. It's still going to come back in. It's still going to be a problem. Like, Clone is doing a very valiant job, but they are not getting rid of the things that need to be gotten rid of. They are not getting rid of the Southeast. And at this point, it's going to be hard with all these defenders as well. I mean, I almost recommend a tactical nuclear or tactical missile silo just to get rid of this. Like, fire a napalm missile inside here. That might be the best bet right now. At this point, it's even too late for phoenixes. They wouldn't live. Dirtbags being sent over in the right general direction, but that's not going to help out too much. Yeah, this is why Spider and Jump Pot's popular here. And Gunship. That's why these are popular, because they can deal with this. They can get what they need in the corners. Not so much when you're dealing with anything to do with shield bots, cloaky bots, any vehicles... They have to work harder to take those corners. Still, another Firewalker goes down at the cost of two Ravens. Bit of a steep cost, but they didn't die inside of Randy's territory. That's the important thing. I mean, the Ravens worth four... Sorry, the Firewalker's worth four Ravens. Still still kind of worth it. No one still gets ahead on that trade, but it is a trade. Oh, yeah. Actually, Scuzzy does have a point. Dirtbags could tear that apart if Clone was so inclined. However, they do not appear to be going for that. They are building a few dirtbags here and there. They have like five in their queue and repeat. But no, the dirtbags are going purely for scouting purposes. They want to see what is going on inside of Clone's base. Just rush in, see what's happening, or or not. I'm not entirely sure. I thought they were trying to scout out, see what's going on. Get a good idea of what Randy's up to. Sorry, I said Clone's base. I meant Randy's base. 
Phil almost get an idea of what's going on in Randy's base. Good plan. But even then, that's not really worth it. Like, Cohen should really focus on getting rid of the southeast. It's getting increasingly well defended over time. What are these dirtbags even doing? Not sure what the what the end game of these dirtbags was. I mean, they're kind of distracting the air force. So that the south, this west side. That that's a thing. That's probably what it was. But they only distracted. Well, actually, they distracted everything. The ravens too. So that was actually not a bad play there. A little bit surprising that it worked, but yeah, Clone able to completely distract Randy, come in with heavier units over the west side of the map. The felon, apparently the second felon, also died. Bit of a shame. Still, Thuglaw Ball doing what it does best, which is tear apart light units. With pretty much impunity. Yeah, it's total, total impunity. Nothing to be said there. And Raven's trying to get rid of what they can, but a few of them are going to go down in the process. Actually, all of them are going to go down in the process. Randy sacrificing all the Ravens for a couple thugs. Actually, a bit more than that. Those are a few. Those like three thugs and an outlaw or two that were lost. That that was that was. I don't know if it's quite an even trade, but that was probably an even trade. Still, that's all of Randy's Ravens. And if Clone can get rid of Randy's Swifts, then Clone is air control completely. And they still have Ravens. They can still tear apart what they need to. There is that Archangel, but that Archangel's. Part of the northwest. However, that's also where the Ravens are going. Try to get rid of, get rid of the Freaker. Not get rid of the Metal Extractor, but still get rid of the Freaker. Eliminate the ability to, con to consolidate the northwest. That is still a good plan. Bone, no however, might be attacking. They're, they're not playing as defensively as they normally do. I just noticed. They're being much more risky. They're pushing forward. They're attacking more. They're attacking in areas that might not be so vulnerable. Like, they're not sticking to the vulnerable areas. They're not retreating when they're getting attacked. They're not keeping every unit alive. Clone's playing a bit differently than here. I think because they are facing against Randy, that is probably going to cause their strategy to change. And also, they are ahead. Militarily and economically, they are ahead. They just can't get rid of the north to the southeast. And it looks like I think Dirtbag Spam is... Yeah, Dirtbag Spam is exactly what's going to happen. As soon as they actually get close enough that no one realizes they need to jump. But yeah, Dirtbag Spam that's exactly what's going to happen. We see it coming in here. Few of them die but the defenders... Okay, the Lotus is the biggest problem. The dirtbags should be able to get rid of the defenders, but the Lotuses might be an issue. However, at this point, the Southeast is known about. So we could see some Aryans coming in to try to help out. Some, well, probably not Phoenixes. No one ever builds Phoenixes, but Ravens. We could see Ravens coming in to help out. And more dirtbags coming in to get rid of more and more of these defenders. Mostly the defenders. I mean, they're dying in the process, but yeah, dirtbags man could do the trick. Still. At this point, I think that Missile Silo is the best bet. Ooh, nice jump on that Archangel. Still gonna die, but not a bad jump dodge. Oh, no, does not die! What? One more bomb would kill it, too, and it doesn't die. That was... I'm not sure if that was clever or what, but yeah, that... That stayed alive in a very improbable situation. And Randy, still kind of behind, but still just... I mean, I'm glad Clone tried. It's good that they tried. I just... I can't think of anything else that I should deal with it besides a Napalm Missile at this stage. Like, 10 minutes ago, yeah, Dirtbag Spam would have dealt with it. Now? No, definitely not. And Cloaky Switch as... Randy going for Cloaky Switch. Going for Heavy Rocco. Interesting, not going for Heavy Glaive. I would have expected Heavy Glaive, but nope. Heavy Rocco instead. There's... They're going for the Direct Assault. I think they just want to end this. Go for Mass Rocco. Assault everything. Use the rockets to get rid of the shields, because the shields are very easy targets. They can't really dodge. The units themselves can dodge, but the shield is so big that they cannot move out of the way in time. Which makes rockets the best choice when fighting shield bots. Or at least a good choice when fighting against... When fighting against the shielded shield bots is a good choice. When fighting, fighting against a bunch of bandits, then no, glaives are a better choice. Or warriors. But yeah, rockets are a great choice when fighting against the shielded shield bots, of which Clone has been taking full advantage of. Especially with this Felon Ball coming in here. Clone pushing very far forward. This commander is extremely vulnerable, but not a whole lot's here to punish it. Mostly Archangels. All the rock was going to the southeast side of the map. Another set of a dozen dirtbags trying to take out the north... Sorry, the southeast. While the northwest being taken out by Clone's Felon Ball. Which has run out of steam. Like, it's really run out of power. It needs to be pulled back. It needs to be regrouped. There needs to be more thugs being pulled into it. Or the convicts need to pull into it to recharge the shields. Either way... Something needs to be done there. And there are Phoenixes! Okay, so it looks like Clone is going to be going for Phoenix and not Missile Silo. My original advice... 
I don't think that was really close enough to be considered spec cheating, though. That that was clone. That was clone's own doing. They didn't do it immediately. And sharpshooter as well from Randy, which is to be expected. Felon basically countered by sharpshooter. Nice getting rid of that roach, too. Looks like there are some roaches coming from Rand from clone. Now, clone at this point, they are not actually going... They're going for these napalm bombers for the Rockos, not for the Northeast. That's why it took them so long to build them, because they aren't building it for this. They aren't trying to get rid of these defenders and wind generators and everything with napalm bombers. They're trying to do a dirtbag spam. I, I mean, if they do the shot eating on the defenders, that would be great. That'd be brilliant. I love to see that. Hopefully they do do that. Because they did get rid of a lot of the Rockos, or at least force them back. However, uh, Randy switched over back to Swifts. And I don't see a whole lot of Swifts coming up for... No, there are no, there's one Swift for Clone. That's about it. And you know, once again, we see more Napalm Bombers being used to get rid of Rockos. But not to get rid of these Wind Generators and Defenders. I don't know why Clone is not doing that. And going over to the northwest side of the map, where they aren't really as necessary. It's, it's really the southeast, so... Right idea. But that would have been a Raven shot. Like, that's where Ravens should have gone. Phoenix should have gone to the southeast, and at this point, I think that's going to really seal it for Randy, because Randy's going to go for a counterattack. There are enough Swifts that Randy knows, oh, hey, they can... Felon's going to attack my base. Yeah, I'll keep these Swifts on hand. Sharpshooter to help get rid of the Felon, or get rid of the Commander, which two shots away from a Sharpshooter to kill. And there are two sharpshooters. It's just... Clone has pinned Micro and his commander away. Just moving it around so... It, or maybe not moving around that much, but it has moving around just so that sharpshooters can't easily kill it. And more Phoenix is coming in. Trying to tear apart the front lines. Not really the best idea. The, the best thing that will come from that is finding one of the sharp Finding both sharpshooters, but there's no follow-up force. There's nothing that can actually deal with that. Okay, the sharpshooters have been found. There's a general idea of where they are. And if the Napalm Bombers are really good, they might hit them, but I don't think they're not going for them. They're not going to go for them at all. Yeah, a lot of the Phoenixes are going down. Why are the... That's the perfect force to get rid of the Southeast, and they aren't being used. And at this point, it looks like Randy is going to be just advancing through. Clone lost a lot of the ground army. Randy's now 2,000 metal ahead. Clone invested a lot into dirtbags, where Phoenix is... Phoenix plus Dirtbag would have been great. Skazi pointed that out. Dirtbag on its own, not so much. And another Phoenix shot does spot one of the sharpshooters once again, but again, no follow-up force. The, the Ravens, I mean, they might they might get lucky. They might go for it. No, going for the Zeus instead of the sharpshooter. Despite the sharpshooter... Okay, there we go. One of them did go for the sharpshooters. So that's, that's only one sharpshooter left. Randy still has one, but at least one of them is gone. Clone still getting behind, though. Not as far behind now, having gotten rid of a sharpshooter. That's a lot of metal. I think 900 metal each. No, 750 each. But Randy has managed to hold on to this. Has really not had this contested too much. The dirtbags, yes, but other than that, no. The Phoenixes, still not going out to deal with that. Even though that would be like one pass, and it would get rid of most of the stuff that then a few dirtbags could tear apart the rest. Or a couple ravens could tear apart the rest. But it would get rid of a lot of the overdrive, get rid of a lot of the defenders. I mean, at this point, like I said, it's kind of tough now. There are so many defenders. Randy's been building defenders non-stop in this entire area. Throughout this entire game, they've been consolidating the southeast, making it stronger and stronger, because why not? They have the money. And it's paying off. The Napalm Bomber is doing a decent job getting rid of Rockos, tearing apart what they need to. I mean, that, was, that was a good shot there. I mean, they're getting rid of the Rockos, they're getting rid of the army, but they're not getting rid of the economy. The Randy... Still holding on to that. And the sharpshooter here is dangerously close to the commander. Not sure if Randy is... Oh yeah, Randy's aware there's something there. Not... Surprised they aren't aware of what it is, but... They are aware something exists. And more Phoenix is coming in. At this point, the Swifts, however, are going to tear them apart. There are too many Swifts. Randy does have air control. Should be pointed out, there are no Swifts belonging to... Or maybe one belonging to Clone. No, not even. No Swiss belonging to Clone. Clone is no anti here. Clone just trying to tear apart everything on the ground with bandits, with thug, fel, thug law ball. No more felons and no racketeers either to try to get rid of the Archangels directly or. I don't know what else. The Zeus's, I suppose. The racketeers would be pretty good against Zeus's. Yeah, keeping straight to bread and butter shieldbot units. They are starting to get 
You know, they're getting more and more Phoenixes, but they're not being used continuously. And this is too late. Like I said, this needs a missile silo. The Dirtbag Phoenix thing would have worked, but the time for that has passed. Still not doing a bad job tearing apart the front line, but yeah, once again, Swift's come in, tear apart all of the Phoenixes. Or almost all the Phoenixes. All but two. There was at least four that died there. At least. And there's many more in this graveyard. And then, of course, the sharpshooter here. Going for defenders, not going for the commander, surprisingly enough. Now he's going to go for the commander. Now the commander has to be worried. I don't think Clone is even... Is Clone paying attention to this? Clone is not really paying attention to this at all. So their commander, surprisingly, not still that threatened. And Dirtbag is coming in, possibly to help screen. Possibly help attack the Northwest. Clone not going for the Metal Extractors, going for the Freakers. I can kind of see why, but they had enough to kill the Freaker and both Metal Extractors. They had enough raids to do that with. I wonder if Clone is feeling panicked or worried or whatever, in fact they were fighting against Randy. Got rid of the Sharpshooter though, but yeah, I don't know if they're feeling panicked because this play is very unclone like Like, I mean, this was a vulnerable area that could have been gotten. Clone usually harasses around pretty nicely. I mean, they harass around stuff that's vulnerable that's likely to get killed. I don't know if they've really done that so much here. I think they're just not sure what to do. I mean... Randy is a very strong player, and they have defended themselves decently well around the map. They haven't really left anything open. And Clone style of the play really relies on capitalizing on openings. At this point, Randy is... Randy's finishing things off. There is not much more to be said here. Clone going in for one more dirtbag assault, but just way too many dirtbags bills. No, okay, clone with the dirt bags, you could have then allowed the Phoenixes to go in when the defenders were recharging. I mean, the defenders were reloading, and the Phoenixes could have gone in and burnt everything to the ground. Or, like I said, build a missile silo. With the missile silo, you'd be able to build a napalm missile and tear it apart. It's a bit expensive, but it would work. Or do it much earlier on, like five minutes into the game when Randy had first taken it. Just keep an eye on it. Or terraform. Like, that's the thing. I often see players, when they go for shield bots or cloaky bots, they will terraform a ramp right here. Or, analogously, right here. They'll terraform and use the terraform to get up, rather than using air units or transports or jump bots or spiders. Yeah, I see that, but I still think both corner both corners are very important. And the fact is, you didn't have either of them, which... Actually, surprisingly, your economy was still ahead. The economy was still very much ahead. But yeah, Randy could have... There was just a lot that could have been here that could have been lost. With an earlier assault. Right now, yeah, it's way too late right now. Right now, napalm missile or bust. That's it. And yeah, it's also another thing to point out. Yeah, corner, the corner is plus 5 each, not including overdrive. They're plus 2.61 each. Low ground's plus 1.82. Except in the main base, which is plus 2.25. Corner and these two sides here, those are the most valuable, which I'm sure you noticed. I'm sure you noticed that, Clone. It's just, that's the thing. Randy did have that. Anyway, at this point, Randy is pretty much going for the kill. Not much left to deal with that. Randy's going to take it out, and that is pretty much going to be game. Yeah, Randy took that corner and really made it work. I mean, not the fact that there was... It's just good switches all the time. Clone did stick to the... I mean, the shield ball worked okay, but Clone very much stuck to that shield ball, which got countered. I mean, it got... Sharpshooters were countering it. The the pyros were being countered by it. The firewalker was doing okay. But yeah, overall, just Randy switching when they needed to and having the economy to do that the whole time. Just taking care of that economy would have really reduced the amount of options Randy had. That's a good point, actually. Finn's Revenge does have similar mechs, though. In Finn's Revenge's case, it's an island that's only it's accessible only by air and hover and amphib. Whereas in this case, it's Air, Spider, Jumpy, Cloaky, and Terraform. I mean, admittedly, you could Terraform to the Islands and Finn's Revenge, but no one ever does that. That would be a lot of metal. Kind of interested to see if someone actually does play a game where that happens, though. I mean, Finn's Revenge's floor, the actual floor of the ocean, or the sea floor, I guess, that's not that low. You could theoretically do it, in theory. You could. And also, this isn't a hole. This is walkable. Like, everything can go over here. I mean, bots can't really path in here. But spiders can. And this this is not harmful. This is dried lava, effectively. But 
But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And hope for those of you who are a bit newer, that was kind of educational. And yes, corner mechs is very key. And also, making sure that you know when to switch over between air and ground. That was a good cloaky switch too for all the Rockos, because the Rockos do a really good job. I mean, Jumpbot Factory does have... Like, moderators can kind of help, but those don't hit often enough. Pyros can kind of help, but those get killed fairly quickly. Firewalkers can help, but those can be dodged easily, easily enough. Sumo would have been really expensive. Probably wouldn't have done much. Placeholder would have been really good. Actually, placeholder would have been very scary to deal with. Because all the units are clumped up, so a single placeholder black hole bomb, that would have caught the entire shield ball, and then the pirates could just surround it and burn it down. It would have burnt through the shields, and then burnt the units down. That probably would have done a huge amount of damage. For the shield bot, on the other hand, well, terraforming is always good. And... Otherwise, that, I mean, bread and butter shield ball was kind of justified. It was working quite well. Near the end, it started to break down. I mean, there was a scuttle that destroyed it over here at one point, and the sharpshooters got rid of it here later on. But it was still a good choice for shield bot. Yeah, you're right. I probably was too critical of the play. I just... I don't know. This map, to me... This map is corner expansions to me. Like the, the corner expansions are the key feature of the map for me. I really noticed them because both they're very valuable and you have to actually put a bit of effort into getting them because they are not bot pathable. Like, there's no bot pathable way of getting up this cliff. You have to terraform, you have to use air, you have to use jump your spider. So I just noticed them a lot. And yeah, it would have been either a fact switch or a terraform. Like I said, terraforming this ramp right here, that is the only way that you can do it without a fact switch. If you're playing Cloaky or playing Shields, you have to do a terraform. That's the only option, other than fact switch. Although, yeah, an earlier air fax switch might not have been a terrible idea either. But yeah, it worked out really well. The, the fighting was good. The actual unit usage was quite good. It's just that... I don't know. It's one of those things where it would have just tipped the balance just enough. Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed that. Sorry if I was overly critical. I sometimes do that. Actually, can roaches... I thought roaches did terrify. Um, yeah, the roaches tear from a bit, but not very much. Anyway, that is going to be it for me tonight. Once again, I hope you enjoyed that. And have a good night, everybody. Okay, good. Clone says they enjoyed it. Okay, I'm happy. I don't want to be... I don't like being overly critical and then not being able to back it up. I sometimes feel a little bit bad about that, but it's just... Corner mix is super important. Anyway, once again, good night.